assistant chief executive and chief financial officer for St. Joseph. And he has flown all the way to Chennai after many years. Chennai could be very much. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Because it is, after many years, he's coming and he's, he's been pleasantly surprised by the changes that uh, has happened in Chennai. And sitting, uh, she is the area director for India and South Asia. And she is based in Mumbai with me. And she covers South India market. And so she's the key person for uh, Southern India, uh, which includes the nine cities that are directly connected to Singapore. So I'm very happy now to open the floor for some questions. I know we are standing in between lunch for you. Uh, any questions, please ask and then we will try and take some of these questions that you have. Thank you. Sir, 1.9 million uh, business in here in the Singapore world are in here. South India... Can we pass a mic? Is there a mic? Another mic? Uh, South India? No, South India top and North India top. Sir, who are you? Who is this? Okay, so the question is... Uh, of the 1.19 million, not, not 1.9 million, that would be a fantastic number if I can get. Please get the number right. It is 1.19 million up to end of October. 2018 was the highest number, which was 1.44 million. 1.9 million would be fantastic. But please, I'm not saying it, it is my target. I'm just saying 1.44 million, 2018, up to October 2019 was 1.19 million. So the question is of that, uh, how is South India represented? So our key metro cities are Mumbai, Chennai, Delhi, Bangalore, right? So these are the top uh, key metro cities from which the highest number of tourists comes uh, to Singapore. And then after that, you've got places like Calcutta, uh, Hyderabad, uh, Ahmedabad, Pune, uh, Koyamutu, Trichy. So these are the next set of uh, cities. So in that sense, South India is a very, very important region. But in the rank order, the key cities are Mumbai, Chennai, Delhi, Bangalore. And then after that, you've got Chichi, Kuala Lumpur, Hyderabad as well. Chris, starting from Singapore, it's such a South India, Singapore, is shipping or it is stationary or what? Oh, cruise. Okay. So his question is, uh, how is the cruise holiday? So maybe I'll ask a get sitting to answer that. So, what, your question is, how is the cruise holiday, how is it uh, for the Indian travellers, right? Uh, can, you, can, you, can you all hear me? Yeah. Anyway, uh, good afternoon, sorry I was late. Uh, my name is Sitting, uh, area director from Mumbai. Uh, so, I think an uh, interesting question that you brought up here, cruise is something that we've always been trying to uh, kind of promote in India. Um, Singapore is uh, one of those uh, countries where we actually welcome a lot of Indians uh, to Singapore for the cruise sailing. So cruise remains uh, number one for us from India in terms of uh, cruise passengers. So I think from us, what we're trying to do actively out here doing all these uh, trade road shows, uh, doing all these product update, destination update, is for the purpose of raising the awareness of the cruise products. So we have four ships home ported in Singapore. Uh, we have Gunting, we have RCI, we have uh, Costa, we also have Princess uh, cruise ships. So, and these are the more popular ones that Indians are usually taking uh, when they fly to Singapore and they take their cruise out and which they can then go to all the neighbouring uh, countries around uh, Malaysia, Thailand as well. So I think pertaining to your question in terms of how uh, cruise, it's, uh, it is an important uh, aspect for us. Right? And uh, I think for us, the key priority is to get uh, people on board and people to, to be interested in going for cruise uh, holidays. So I think for STV, how we are supporting this is we have a scheme called Cruise Development Fund, uh, which I would uh, love for some of the media friends to also help us promote, um, you know, in, in your news article, to say that, you know, STV is aggressively going out there uh, to get cruise agents or agents selling cruise products. We are supporting them through marketing dollars. So as long as they fulfill a certain set of criteria, we can get, they can get support of up to 50% of the marketing qualifying cost. So in terms of whether they're doing trade shows, they're doing trainings, they're doing, uh, say, your media buy ads for cruise products, as long as they've included two nights stay in Singapore, they're eligible for this cruise development fund. And I think that's what STB, uh, STB's role in facilitating some of all these cruise traffic to Singapore will be. How many Indians are taking cruise? How many Indians? So uh, in 2018, we don't have the 2019 numbers yet. In 2018, 
in 2019, it was 1.6 lakh visitors from India taking the cruise. So it was the number one market, uh, 1.6 lakh visitors in 2018. We are waiting for the 2019 numbers. Just to add on to, to the question and uh, response to sitting. So, cruise, number one, the cruise ship is home ported in Singapore, but you travel to neighboring destinations. So it is a fantastic way of coming to Singapore and then you experience Malaysia, Thailand, you know. Uh, so it is a cruise ship is sailing out within Southeast Asia, number one. Number two, who is interested in cruise? Families with children, they love cruising. But increasingly, uh, a lot of young Indian travelers are also taking up cruising. In fact, it is an interesting uh, statistic that the Indian cruise traveler is probably the youngest or among the youngest in the world. The average age of a cruise traveler is normally above 40s, but for the Indian cruise traveler segment, it is under 40s. So it's a very young crowd that's going. And then the other area is, of course, mice, meetings incentives. They do a lot of cruising. And finally, uh, one of the points I want to add, and this is actually a sound bite. Uh, this is what I would like to say. One of the key segments that we want to go after in 2020 is the wedding segment. So the Singapore Tourism Board, together with partners like Sentosa, uh, Gardens by the Bay and other attractions and hotel partners, we would like to bring Indian weddings to Singapore and make Singapore an important international wedding destination for the Indians. And what that means is, today you can come to Singapore for weddings on board ships because Genting Dream, RCI, they are very big on cruise weddings. But we are also looking to promote Singapore as an interesting destination uh, for Indian weddings. So we would like to grow the Indian wedding segment, number one, and number two, overseas school trips. We would like to re-engage the market for overseas school trips. So many years ago, Singapore Tourism was very, very uh, focused on promoting Singapore as a overseas school trip destination. We would now like to re-engage the market because increasingly we see a lot of students are going for overseas school trips and Singapore is a very natural choice for overseas school trips. So weddings and overseas school trips are two very important segments that we are going to go after in 2020. So what's the package of the cruise ship? How many days? It, it ranges two to three nights packages are available, seven nights, uh, five to seven nights packages are available as well. So the cruise holidays, uh, depending on the kind of ship, uh, you can take either two or three night package or a three to five nights uh, package or even up to, seven, uh, up to seven nights as well. But uh, more popular ones are the, the either two to three nights or three to five nights. What's the uh, cost for three nights? Uh, it varies. Uh, <laughs> I think it's an interesting question and I sense a lot of interest in terms of the cruise products. Uh, so we'll get our cruise liners on board to share with you some of, our pack some of their packages because I think STV we don't actually sell direct to consumers. Uh, we work with our cruise liners to promote these packages. So I think uh, there are different cruise products for different uh, budgets uh, and there are different cruise products for different segments, whether it's your family crowd, or whether it's your millennial crowd, or whether it's your young working adults crowd. Um, and I think that's an interesting question that you brought up because we do have uh, a lot of promotions going on with our cruise liners and we'll be happy to connect you with them to find out more about this. Then maybe you can run an article about that as well. Yeah? Can I, can I invite, uh, because I think it's not uh, every day that you have the assistant chief executive of a major attraction uh, in India. So can I have uh, uh, Sakin to say a few words, I think he has spoken a lot about all the various attractions that's taking place in Sentosa. But I think uh, you'll be very interested from, from his perspective, uh, what, what is the overarching statement that he would like to make about Sentosa? So may I, may I invite Sakin to say a few words about Sentosa? Thank you, Shita. I think uh, <laughs> Sentosa has been a very important kind of destination in, within Singapore for tourists. And as I mentioned earlier, the Indian tourists forms our largest group of uh, tourist arrivals into Singapore, uh, Sentosa, of which we receive 19 million a year. We are a tourist destination and life for us, unfortunately, doesn't stand still. Just as life for my colleague doesn't stand still. We are in constant search for refresh and rejuvenation of the island. And I think, I hope you managed to see from the video that we've just shown how we will be transforming Sentosa in the long term, mid term and also the short term. I think what we are very excited about is uh, our vision 
of transforming Sentosa from a day to night destination are all coming to realities. The, the next three attractions that we will be kind of uh, activating over the next, I would say, next three to four months are blend themselves very, blend themselves very well as a night attraction. Magical Shores, which we saw a snippet of, and you are the first in the world to see it, will be a very exciting interactive uh, beach, light and music uh, spectacle. So I think that is something that we will transform Sentosa Beach from a, a quiet beach into a very exciting beach. And I think the most important point that may, maybe many of your readers will be very interested in is it is free. There won't be a charge for of coming to visit and participating because the, our guests will get to participate in this uh, attraction called Magical Shores and they can come free so once they have finished all the attractions for the day they can spend the evening at Magical Shores free of charge. Thank you. Any any questions? Sorry, I'll just take this question because, yeah, sorry. What's the share of leisure and vice? And also, you have mentioned about China and Indonesia being top one and one. What are the tourist uh, arrivals from? I'll take the first question first. The first question is what is the share between the leisure and the business traveler segment? Leisure is still the mainstay. A lot of leisure travelers come to Singapore. Uh, we do not have the, the 2019 numbers yet. But generally, generally, it's about 65 35. Right? So it's about 65% of the travellers are leisure and about 35% are business travellers. But I must say that uh, the, the balance of the travellers is also increasing. More and more business travellers are coming to Singapore. The second question was... China and Indonesia. Okay, China and Indonesia. All I can say is in terms of catching up, China is clearly ahead. Uh, but I will get Sidney to say a few words about the ranking. He's asking about ranking China and Indonesia. Uh, before I say about China and Indonesia, I just want to reiterate that India remains a very important source market for, for Singapore, right? So uh, we know that India is third, uh, China stands on the top position at about 3.4 million, uh, Indonesia is second at about 3 million, uh, then comes India at 1.44, so we really need a lot of help from our media friends here to continue promoting Singapore for us to reach greater heights in terms of attracting more visitors from India to Singapore and I think that's our ultimate goal, right? So I can just add on, India's potential to contribute more visitors to, uh, to Singapore or other parts of the world is very high. Today, India has got a growing middle class, number one. Many, many middle class, new middle class is coming up in many cities of India. Your, number two, your cities are becoming mega cities of their own. So you just think about it, even within South India, you've got Chennai, you've got Coimbatore, you've got uh, Hyderabad, Ahmedabad, uh, sorry, uh, Hyderabad uh, and uh, Bangalore. All these are very major cities. So the city development is also causing a lot of developments within India and uh, a lot of potential is coming up from that. Third, India is rapidly building up its aviation sector, right? Uh, yes, we had turbulence in 2019, but many, many cities are now getting connected. Many, many cities are now getting connected domestically as well as internationally. For your, your uh, young, right? About 67% of the Indian population is under the age of 35. So when, when this population is travelling, they are travelling to very, very interesting destinations and they are looking for very, very interesting experiences. So the working millennials is a very important segment for the Singapore tourism. And with these young travellers coming to Singapore for their lifestyle, events, entertainment, it's a very, very important catchment for us and target audience for us. So overall, 1.44 million number for 2018, which is the highest number to date from India to Singapore. When you compare that against about 3 mil, which is China and Indonesia's number, there's still, there's still some way to, to uh, grow this market. So we are hopeful, and that's why all the Singapore stakeholders and uh, tourism partners, we are hopeful that we will see a rise in the outbound travel from India to uh, all over the world. And of that, we will have an important slice uh, of the pie, and more Indian travellers will come to Singapore. Yes, you had a question? Chennai especially. Sorry, one more time. Any plans to bring the Singapore 
Because as you said, there is a lot of craze. Uh, bringing Singapore-based cruise ships to India, we need to talk to the cruise lines. Uh, as of now, as of now, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, in fact, India itself is now starting to develop its cruise uh, facilities as well as cruise ships. You've got Chalesh, which is now sailing within uh, India. And I'm sure over time, you see, for us as a strategy, there are two prong strategies for cruise. Number one, we would like to get the Indian travellers to be more informed about cruise as a holiday option. We need more Indian travellers to consider cruise as a holiday option. And then number two, consider Singapore as a cruise holiday destination. So, uh, in terms of cruise lines coming to uh, India, I think there are certain clients with the Indian, Indian government and uh, cruise ships are looking at. Uh, but from the cruise lines, I can't, I can't uh, respond to that statement or question. Thank you. So, what is the participation of Tamil Nadu after the Chennai? In, in Tamil Nadu, uh, after Chennai, Koi Mutur is very, very important. Uh, in fact, I, I think probably it's Trichy, Koi Mutur, Madurai, probably in that kind of a ranking. But all these three cities are giving us very good numbers, it is a growing number. So I hope that we will see more visitors from all these cities coming up. Maybe I'll just take one last question uh, because I know some of you are so sorry it took a bit longer. Maybe I'll just take one last question and then we can maybe continue in, in small groups. Uh, yeah. Yeah, hey, you say that 20 packs to 250 is a separate is slot, and then 50 and above is a different slot, and then less than 90. If, if it is rate, will it change amount? <coughs> You are talking about the business, uh, sorry, you are talking about the MICE uh, travel. So that particular schemes are uh, for the MICE travels, meetings, incentives, travellers. So if today a corporate is coming with their incentive groups to Singapore, if their number is between 20 to 250, the INSPIRE program will kick in. So INSPIRE is providing experiences to the group. If it is above 250, then the company will be eligible for the business events in Singapore scheme. So in both these schemes, benefits the corporate. The Singapore MICE Advantage program, the third uh, program that we talked about, is benefiting the consumer himself. So he's given vouchers or he's given some uh, deals which benefits him. So the corporates benefit with Inspire and business events in Singapore and the consumer, the incentive traveller benefits with SMAC. Okay, any, okay, if not, I would just like to conclude with this statement. And I'll ask Sakin to also conclude. <coughs> Singapore tourism sees India as a very, very important market. And in that regard, we are kick-starting our very first roadshow in Chennai today. And this is a testimony to the importance that Singapore Tourism Board, as well as the Singapore Tourism stakeholders, place on Chennai and other cities within South India. Number two, we are looking to grow this market and with the support of our travel trade partners who have uh, overwhelmingly supported the roadshow. So as I said, about 150 local travel agents from Chennai and neighbouring cities have come for our roadshow uh, and, that, uh, and this group of people are interacting with about 50 Singapore tourism stakeholders who have flown in, including Sakhin, who has come in for this particular roadshow. So we are hoping to grow our connections and achieve good results together. What is the Tamil Nadu is a school of So that? Tamil Nadu is a school of the Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu is a school of Tamil Nadu. Adhuvandhu, travel agents, Singapore Lola travel agents, Yenayindhu, attractions, Nepali centers are attracts, Yenayindhu, Yenayindhu, Nanga Sarugayikul Vanandhu Kudiyya Vaipu Kudiyadhukku, Adhuvandhu, and the school of Kudiyadhukku, and the travel agents of Kudiyadhukku. So, what is the word? Tamari. Singapore Pahinathurayi Kuruntha Parayi, India, Uru Miga Miga Mukhiya Vana Sandhai. China, Mudal Edathilu, Indonesia, Iran, India, Mura, and India. Singapore, Barakudia, Piney, and Yenike. Iran, Padanaita, Mandi, Mudal Borayaga, one million Piney, and Singapore, and Iran, Padanaita, Mandi, Aita, and Aita, 
இந்தியாவிலிருந்து வரக்கூடிய பயணிகளின் எண்ணிக்கை ஒரு மில்லியனையும் ஒரு மில்லியனுக்கு மேல் இருக்கிறது ஆக தொடர்ந்து சிங்கப்பூர் பயணத்துறை வாரியம் சிங்கப்பூர் பயணத்துறை முகவர்களும் இந்தியாவிற்கு வந்து இங்கு உள்ள பயணிகளை சிங்கப்பூருக்கு நாங்கள் வருக வருக வரவேற்கிறோம் தமிழ்நாட்டை பொறுத்தவரையில் சென்னை கோயம்புத்தூர் மதுரை திருச்சி என்ற நான்கு இடங்களிலிருந்து சிங்கப்பூருக்கு நேரடி விமான சேவையில் சிங்கப்பூருக்கு வர முடியும் தமிழ்நாடு ஒரு முக்கியமான பயணிகளை கொடுக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு நாடு ஆக இந்த தமிழ்நாட்டிலிருந்து வரக்கூடிய பயணிகளை வருக வருக என்று வரவேற்கிறோம் தென்னிந்தியாவை பொறுத்தவரையில் ஒன்பது நகரங்கள் ஹைதராபாத் பெங்களூர் உட்பட ஒன்பது நகரங்களில் இருந்து சிங்கப்பூருக்கு நேரடி விமான சேவை இருக்கிறது ஆக எங்களுடைய அன்பு வேண்டுகோள் அன்பு என்ன சொல்வது அரைக்கூவல் சிங்கப்பூருக்கு வருக 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 மிக்க நன்றி ஓகே தேங்க்யூ வெரி மச்